January 14, 1952. 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are in NBC's World Communications Center in the heart of Radio City, New York. We are in touch with the world. We'll tell you what's happening today. My name is Jack Laskula. And here is Dave Garrow. Well, here we are. And good morning to you. The very first good morning of what I hope and suspect will be a great many good mornings between you and I. Here it is. Jack said January 14th, 1952, when NBC begins a new program called Today, and if it doesn't sound too revolutionary, I really believe it begins a new kind of television. We'll be with you every day for two hours in the morning, just about the time you get up, 7 to 9 a.m. We're going to try very much to put you more closely in touch with the world we live in by the magnificent, unparalleled means of communication which NBC has assembled into a single room in New York. We call this room our communication center. From it, we'll put you in touch with the whole world, and not only with news, which we'll cover as no program ever has been able to cover before, because we didn't have this many tools, but we'll give you lots of music, music of today, what good records are coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow in art, tomorrow in science, tomorrow and today in sports. All fields of human endeavor, we think we'll be able to inform you better about and the people who are close to you than you had a chance to be informed before. So that as you leave the house at the end of the day, you're close to it at the beginning of the day, knowing where you're going and what the world is like that you're going into. That sounds like a pretty big job. Believe me, it is. We've been working on this for quite a while. We're glad finally to have made the grain into your home for the first day. We hope we can give you enough to stay with you for a long time. And a long time it has been. 30 years of today. Normally at this time, the person who opens the show identifies himself. But at this day, it would be horribly presumptuous of me to do that because we are among friends. We are among the distinguished guests and friends who have been a part of an American tradition helping to wake up America for 30 years. And we are happy that all of these people could join us today. We will be talking with them as this program goes along. And now I guess it's okay to say that I'm Bryant Gumbel, along with Jane Pauley. And uh, our gaiety on this day is tempered only by the events of yesterday in Washington, D.C. Now, Les Cooley. I don't know how you spell it. Um, I'd find out for you. Jack, how do you spell it? Here it goes, Dave. It goes like this. L-E-S-C-O-U-L-I-E. Well, you've got it down pretty well. Well, I've been practicing a long time. You seem reasonable. <laughs> Want you to meet Jack Les Cooley. L-E-S-C-O-U-L-E-Y. <laughs> Why? E? No, E. Why? Yeah. yeah. It's like John Chancellor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, 30 years later, meet the originals. Jack Lascouli, Dave Garraway, and Frank Blair, the pioneers, if you will, of this experiment in broadcasting that we now know of as today. What did you think that first day, guys? <laughs> what did you think? I mean, not did you think I had made a today. terrible mistake? <laughs> you are now in the first phases of the beginning of your real life, Brian. And you'll find that out in the years to come. At least I did. It really was an adventure for you, wasn't it? Oh, boy. <laughs> the adventure. It, um, it changes you from one man into another. In me. And you will feel differently about the world, very much so, uh, if you're on like three, four, five years. You were the communicator. That was the title applied to you. You were the saver. That was your nickname. That's How did right. it come about? <laughs> well, it came about by the trust in the man that I'm sitting next to right here. Uh, Dave... Uh, for some reason or other, we, we worked out a great rapport. And then he said to me, if you ever feel that I'm getting dull or ever think that an interview isn't going right, just walk in, Jack. <laughs> now, that kind of trust you don't get very often. That kind of help you don't get very often. <laughs> <laughs> so the result was that Dave nicknamed me the Saber. Well, and he did many times. Uh, you really are on this show because you did a show called The Grouch Club. That's right. Remember? That's years ago. And I heard ago. you on that from California. You yeah. mentioned your name to Pat Weaver. It was a lot of fun doing it, and uh, uh, Nat Hyken was the writer of that show. Yeah. And we, I did that before I ever did Today, of course, and that was radio. 
Radio? Yeah. What's that? <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> same so, so same thing without pictures, Dave. Yeah. And, and in fact, when, when, you, when you started, they said it was that you were TV or radio with bad pictures. <laughs> um, you did get bad reviews early on, Frank. Oh, sure. Your main, <laughs> your main concern was who the heck is going to watch at 7 a.m., wasn't it? That's exact. Well, it was the concern of all of us, really. Uh, that was our mission to get people to watch at 7 o'clock in the morning. But we, uh, one columnist said, why doesn't NBC roll over and go back to sleep? And uh, John Crosby. What hath, what hath God, God wrought, and he wound wrought? Up, uh, he wound up his column by saying, cannot last beyond 13 weeks. It was close. Well, all was, the great uh, pioneers, you know, Copernicus, Galileo, mm -hmm. we all suffered for this for the first year or two. Uh, <laughs> That's true. No, but uh, things happen. You're putting us in pretty fast company, though. <laughs> Dave, you said right on that first show that it was your intention to be informative without being terribly stuffy. And you, above all, accomplished that. Why were you afraid of being stuffy? I don't like stuffy things uh, or people very much, I guess. And, uh, there was so much to talk about and do, and there still is in this world, uh, that I don't find it a very stuffy world even today. And you if you can get the world over to them, that's great. You spent more time on the air with uh, a monkey by the name of J. Fred Muggs than anybody else. You didn't consider that all at, at, at all demeaning, because oh, you're not crazy. a stuffy guy, huh? <laughs> he was a charming, marvelous beast. The fact is that he is more in the public eye today. I don't know which camera will, hello. Uh, it's working here. <laughs> Nothing's changed. But I, I brought this week's TV guide, and on, on the cover it says our distinguished J. Fred Muggs Award. And here's a whole picture of J. Fred Muggs uh, uh, awarding crazy things to people. And this monkey, uh, monkey, oh dear, this chimpanzee has been off the air for 21 years. Oh. And yet he's still in the public eye. It's a good place for us to stop right here and call a halt to what you used to call a recess for the oh, grown ups. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. we're going to come back. We're going to talk about J. Fred Muggs, and we're going to meet the man who started this 30 years ago. But first, at 719, this is today on NBC. <laughs> There's no better place to buy a new Datsun than from Mount Hood Datsun in downtown Gresham. This rugged 82 Datsun pickup is just $54.95. Equipped with an economical NAP Z 2.2 liter engine, four speed power assist front brakes, and carries a 1,400 pound payload. Yours for only $199 down and $152.81 per month. Better price, better choice, better service. Mount Hood Datsun, 1925 East Powell in downtown Gresham. Your full service Datsun dealer. Nestle announces a better homemade oatmeal cookie. A better oatmeal cookie? <laughs> it is better. It's Nestle Oatmeal Scotchies. Better because you bake them up butterscotchy rich with Nestle butterscotch morsels. The foolproof recipe is on the package. Oatmeal Scotchies. A better oatmeal cookie. Hey, better oatmeal cookie. It is better. It's the butterscotch of Nestle butterscotch morsels that makes them better. It's a hospital that's like an extended family, where a smile comes with compassion. Dornbecker Memorial Hospital for Children, where holding hands comes when you're lonely and need a friend, and giving a hug with a hero badge comes to ease the discomfort. The nationally known pediatric specialists at Dornbecker Hospital open their arms to not only critically ill children, but also those with special problems, such as cancer, kidney and heart diseases, endocrine disorders and neurological problems. The expertise and caring shared by the physicians, staff and nurses, the school teachers and therapists help to turn the frightening experience of a strange bed and a strange room into a comforting one. Dornbecker Children's Hospital at the Oregon Health Sciences University in Portland with over 50 years of caring for and loving the children of Oregon. Unless I miss my guess, I see a certain exciting thing out in the street there. Look in the street on 49th Street, followed by 12 NBC page boys. There comes the regal carriage. I see Mary Kelly and the boys. And perched up on the back between the two boys, I see a glimpse of His Majesty. There's Mary getting down, Buddy and Roy, and in the middle, there is the kid. A regular New York Greetings for Jay Fred. Come 
Honey, little boy. That's Mary Kelly, back from around the world. Welcome home, dear. Gracious thing. And Buddy Manella and Roy Waldron and the King. Hello, old boy. Well, gracious sakes, welcome home and take your shoes off. Be right at home. Boy, that didn't take long, did it? How do you feel? You remember me? I work here all the time. I've just been sitting with you. That's the long, slow look. Don't forget now, I'm looking at you. <laughs> no, I'm, now I'm not looking at you. Take your mouth out of my glasses there. Let's stand here. I can't see so good without these. I want to point out if there's anything going on. You've changed your diet habits, I can see a little bit. <laughs> Jay Fred Muggs, the celebrity, is certainly, certainly a legend in the history of the Today program. And in talking of the history of today, it is impossible not to know the name of Sylvester Peck Weaver because it was his idea to start this thing from 7 to 9 a.m. 30 years ago. It must have been a pretty good idea, Pat, because we're all still here. Um, welcome. Since we left it at Jay Fred, why a chimpanzee? Why well, did you wind uh, up putting Jay Fred on the uh, air? Pleasant little small ape. You know, if you got a gorilla, it might have scared Dave and Jack. I don't think they would have worked with a gorilla. I'm not sure the chimp didn't at, at some points. But when you conceived today, 30 years ago, um, what was your intent? What did you expect it to become? It was, uh, from the beginning, supposed to be a coverage show that had a number of services everybody needed, and we knew that from radio. I mean, I'd been in radio for a long time before television started. We knew people had to know what time it was, uh, what the weather was like, what the latest news was. A lot of different things before they left uh, for the office or stayed home. And we had to get them to change to television, and the television set was in the living room. It was the family viewing at that time. So we had a real problem. Among the problems was that kids would turn the set on to any cartoons, if there were any on, and there were a few that were starting that. Therefore, when mugs did happen, it was the ideal solution to a problem that we, we faced in the early days, which is how to get the kids to like the show. One reviewer suggested that, that the, uh, the people on the program in those early days um, almost looked like baffled fathers on Christmas morning, not sure of what to do with their electronic wizardry. That, that was part of it in the, in the startup, wasn't it? That, that no one really understood the potential of all of this around? I, I, we used to discuss it, <laughs> and uh, it was, it was hard, it was hard to, uh, to make the thing come true in the early days. We didn't have the technology that we have now, but we pretended that we did. Yeah. We're and in you, touch with the world. And you actually taped the program for a while, did you not? Oh, much no. later, in the fifth, no. uh, sixth and seventh year, we taped it, and then we went in live to fix it up the next morning again. And we found that we were spending more time that way than if we did the whole thing live in the morning. Recess time again. We'll be back with our birthday party after a station break. To the Today Show, happy 30th birthday. And I mean it. <laughs>